I am unashamed. What about you? All right, I'm back from Montana. It was a whirlwind tour. You don't realize Billings, Montana, that's a long way from Louisiana. Dad spoke there. So, is Billings where the is that where the college is? I'm assuming they had a college. There's only about two or three big towns in Montana, from what I heard. Do you remember that? Because I mean, Dad, we had I protesters had, at your event. I had hecklers, <laughs> and they bum rushed the stage. <laughs> now that was in. Uh, you remember when we were in? Uh, where were we at? Uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, that was at uh, the that was at the NRA show that time. Yeah, and uh, where they rushed. The- it was crazy. I spoke first, but I, and. I didn't have a problem, you know. <laughs> Phil gets up. <laughs> we hear this racket. Here comes a little small, you know, four or five team. They had posters up, and they were just screaming. Yeah. And look, there's enough security around there to take care of anything. But they just took off right center aisle, got up on that stage, and Phil kind of, you know, like, assumed the position because they were coming at him yeah. on stage you know before the security but that look phil had was like <laughs> he, had his, he had his bible in one hand and he just kind of like and well, then they stopped <laughs> they're calling me a no good mf oh yeah, oh, yeah. And yeah. they're about three four or five feet from me screaming at me you know what's you know what's crazy about that no one knew what the problem was yeah they never they're they're Beef was well, was not clearly illustrated. So look, the same thing, the same thing in Montana. Because we, when we drove by, we slowed down, and they were across the street. The, the you know, we had four law. The sheriff of the county was in the car mm-hmm. with us, so it wasn't like anything was going to happen to us. We drove by, and I was reading their signs because I was like you. I thought, well, I wonder what their beef is. But it was just stuff like you know, love, don't hate, and and I was like, everything I saw on the sign, I agreed with, like, and so do we. Yeah. It was like I don't really get the idea. I did see a couple of rainbow flags, so I'm assuming, you know, this went back to dad from you know years ago about you know Quoting talking about homosexuality. Yeah. yeah, but but I'm saying it's so easy this this protest mentality. Sometimes they just get a crew of them together. Some that somebody remembered they don't like you. They get yeah. they get out their signs from the last eight protests and they just come out there. I I don't know. I wasn't quite. Well, sure. I didn't have any protesters this time, and I I did an event there ten years ago. I asked them how many was there. Somebody reminded me of that I had forgotten, but uh, and one person in the crowd, and I was like, "Oh, you were there. And you're making a return <laughs> visit." And I was like, "Where were the rest of you people?" But when I stood up, I said, "I didn't know the whole state was going to turn out because you know it just doesn't seem like there's a lot of people in Montana, and it, it was." packed and uh it was all, all men so well i knew so it was a I, men's event it was a men's event well when i was church. on the plane you know i'm on the plane going from dallas to montana well most of the people on the plane either live in montana or you know and so i'm i'm sitting there on like row two and this woman comes up and she's like you know i got a problem with you that was her first statement and so, you know, my assistant was like, I could tell she she grabbed the deal like, here we go. You know, I got a protester on the plane. And she's like, I mean, you come to Montana and I go to buy a ticket and it's a male only event. I said, oh, that's your beef? She's like, well, I'm serious. I said, well, if I were you, I said, you got two options. You can either dress up like a man, which is not a really good option. I said, oh, you can just show up and I'll back you because it's easier to get forgiveness than permission. <laughs> you so just caused a heartburn for some she security. Either. But it was sold out. That's why a lot of people, they're uh, emailing and saying, well, where's your events? We want to come. We don't post it because they're already sold out. Yeah, that's they, a problem. So, you know. I guess you have to watch your local news for an appearance. <laughs> Look in your local, uh, yeah, because they do uh, a lot of them. And Dad doesn't do many events, for those of you that ask. He's got a couple this year, but even those are closed. Sometimes they're just closed to a certain group of people. You can go to alanlisarobertson.com to get mine and Lisa's schedule. We're going to be in uh, Bel Air, Maryland uh, this coming uh, Sunday. Well, I'll tell you this. The first weekend uh, in March. Weekend after this one. This, I'm doing a local one. Uh, this weekend, but the next weekend I'll be in Michigan. 
Michigan. So, yeah. So if you're in Michigan, you know, try to figure out where I'm going to be. <laughs> then the week after you, that, you, you just not, Michigan be, is such a small state. You know, I'll be in Florida. So there you go. There's my schedule. I would not notice if I was speaking to a men only gathering, which I've done. And I, I if you say if you see a woman, do, do you say what in the world? Look, I, I don't notice issues like that. Well, well, Phil, they did a men's, a men's event. On, well, if it's know. a men's event and I'm looking over there and I see yeah. three women sitting there, right. I'm not saying I wonder what. Well, it's not us. We it's don't not make an those, issue. We don't make those calls. I mean, whoever organizes. Yeah, we just show up and speak. So. But it was a great event. Uh, but I was there a while and I uh, had a layover, you know, kind of in the middle. And so I went out in the town and because uh, I was looking for a cup of coffee and I, boy, I found a good one. It just it was a little coffee shop, you know, and I I went in there and explained what I wanted. I was like, now I want two shots of espresso in a short cup of coffee, you know. And they're like, with room? I was like, oh, yeah, because I didn't want to spill it on me. But they thought, well, you're not going to drink this without <laughs> so putting you- something else in it. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to, then I sipped it, and the girl was looking like, I mean, they never imagined someone would actually drink this. But it, I said, no, that's, that's exactly what I ordered. That's that's good. But it was funny. The first person I meet on the street comes up and says, Duck Dynasty look, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I said, you got it. I mean, he thought, yeah, he did not think I was Jace from Duck Dynasty. He thought, oh yeah, that's what you're going after. So the, huh? he, he was like, the next thing was like, yeah, that's really 2013 of you there, dude. So the next guy, you know, I'm walking. He said, hey, uh, sir, do you have a minute? And I said, I really don't, just because you know I was playing along. I thought he recognized me. But he had a clipboard, you know, and he said, uh, we're signing a peti- petition, you know, we need to vote for this. And I was like, I- I'm not I'm not from here. And he's like, this is a statewide issue. <laughs> I said, <laughs> he's getting I'm, huffy. I'm not from this state. He went, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I said, I'm from Louisiana. You don't hear the, the way I'm talking right now? And he's like. Are you serious? I was like, yeah, I'm not. I'm not from here. He said, okay, have a nice day. But I thought, <laughs> so you could fit in in Montana. Is what you know, he said. and I got to looking around, and I thought, oh yeah, these people look like me. Yeah. So I felt kind of at home. And you know what I saw we the entire time. time in Billings, Montana, ducks and geese were just flying in gunshot range all over the town. I told him, I said, we don't have this problem in Louisiana. We saw. Uh, Dad and I saw we had snowed in there a day. Remember, we had to stay over because yep. we had flown. The plane couldn't leave. And so we saw a big old herd of elk, about 250 of them. And they were just right outside of town. That's their number one deal. I got I got asked by a lot of them to say, you want to go elk hunting? Because I did like a meet and greet or whatever. And I was like, my buddy, I got a buddy in Kansas that's trying to get me to go. He said, it's the most riveting, you know, because you, with a bow, you're, I mean, these animals are, what are they, a 1,000 pounds? No. I've never gone Huge. elk hunting. And then, then they holler, they bugle. It's like, you know, make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. Yeah. So they're really into that. But what they also said is they got grizzly bears. Oh, yeah. And uh, I said, now, look, what kind of – I said, I may go with you. Because, I mean, the guys that I was most interested in, they, they like, get on horses and take off for, like, 12 days, you know, right. with a bow and arrow. I said, but I want to know what happens – when the grizzly approaches you, because he was talking about you, they got to have everything, you know, all their food uh, sealed and because they don't want to attract yeah. the bears. And he's like, well, I mean, you're not supposed to shoot them, but we all have pistols, you know. I said, okay. All right, so we like our coffee. Um, we like our coffee, like, super strong. Was that yeah. is that a fair statement, Dan? Every time we do this commercial for uh, Black Rifle, I yeah. think of that song. Remember the guy in the our Duck Commander videos? He sang that song, "Old Conover." He sang "Black Coffee." <laughs> uh, yeah. Remember that? <laughs> that's right. Because that, that's what we that you know, as a hunter, you get up early, and you know, we as people of faith have the Holy Spirit of God, but it doesn't hurt to add some strong coffee because it will put a little pep in your step. That's right. 
And don't ever doubt it, the, the, our friends at Black Rifle, they are fueling our podcast because as we're here recording, we are pumping in the Black Rifle, which I think it you know gets you to that place you need to be of just, you know, we're excited about what we're talking about here. Hey, before I speak, I think that I, I like to drink a good, strong cup of Black Rifle. I think I got the Holy Spirit. I'm giving you all I got here. <laughs> I've never said to anyone on this earth, this coffee is too strong. Does that never come out of your mouth? Never come out of my mouth. No matter what I'm drinking, I've never said, this is just too strong. I've said never. it before. I've said it's too weak many times, <laughs> but too strong. No, I've, 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 of- I've said it before. When I drink your coffee, because your water's no good, but you drink it and you're used to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dad's always said more ground. His so water I, has a has a. <laughs> oh yeah, it's not it's good. Something. So so for those of you though that like, well, I don't like my coffee that strong. Well, they make medium uh, and lighter roast as well. I love it that they're all has something to do with a gun. Yeah, these are our kind of. They're military. These are all veterans. These guys. This is our favorite because it's the darkest. Uh, is murdered out, uh, which is one of my favorites. But anyway, they got the whole deal. You get. They also got like a. Coffee club, you can join. They'll just send it to you. I just get it in the mail every uh, this every says month. This Salt Lake City, Utah. Is that where they out of? Yeah. Oh yeah. These guys are out west. Military. Wonderful guys. Basically, if you're enjoying their coffee, you're also supporting the kind of guys we like to support, which is really good. You can do their Black Rifle Coffee Club as well. So anyway, here's a check it out. BlackRifleCoffee.com slash fill. And you're going to get 20% off your first order of any of their products, even their their coffee club. So that's how you get there, blackriflecoffee.com slash fill. Uh, get your discount and get to drinking some really, really good coffee. And they have some pretty funny videos uh, as well. Man, I, if he was going to say, well, you know, you do what I told him what I read about, you know, if a bear approaches you, you know, you can't shoot them. Don't run. Make yourself bigger. You know, the whole deal. <laughs> yeah. and, but what happens if he attacks? At some point, <laughs> at some point, it's him or me. They're like, if you make it, call some, call nine one one, someone with a weapon. How yeah. about I just take one in case the grizz? Yeah. But uh, what did he say? He said some. He gave me a phrase. He said we uh, something about shut up, shovel, and you know, it, it, when they see a. a, a <laughs> Grizzly, that was, they all started with an S, but I can't. Remember. I can imagine but, what one of them it probably is. <laughs> no, it wasn't anything. It was what it was basically I know, like. I know, oh no, I know an S no, word. I, know, I would do. I, I know Shut what it up, was. Shovel and shoot. <laughs> no, that's what it was. It was shoot, shovel, and shut up. And I so when he said that, I thought, okay, wait a minute, shoot. Oh, get a shovel, still, bit, bury, still and then tape. Yep. Yeah. shut up. I yeah. was like, don't talk about it. Okay, I'm interested in going As far as going the various guys. audiences and what I've observed, and of course y'all speak out too, and so are a lot of others, uh, all I know for sure is there has to be a pretty good reason for Jesus to say, blessed are you when people, that's the way he worded it, when people hate you, when people exclude you, when people say uh, they insult you and they say all kinds of evil about you because of me, he said, leap for joy. Blessed are you. Blessed, blessed are you. I mean, so yeah. if you look at that, you say, hmm, great is your reward in heaven. So he kind of prepared us yeah. that not everyone is going to be kind that's right. I mean, if we look at all the, Do you know what the everybody, guys who everybody took off in the I first was there, century, they were severely mistreated and killed. Most yeah. of them. So oh, yeah. you'd Every, expect some pushback. I didn't have everybody there was awesome. I mean, they're yeah. my kind of people. Well, my uh, favorite thing about I don't traveling, really mind a bad mouth and not a cursing. I, 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 I love going it. when you go out west because we're not as well known there. I mean, the show is, but we, you know, we don't. We do most of our stuff in the south, but but or, or the central. But I love going out west because I spoke in Oregon twice. God and I were there because the ones who are there who think like we do, I mean, because they're there. Mm-hmm. I feel sorry because they're sort of trapped there. But they're they're the governments are so left leaning and it's very you know, unfortunate, crazy crap that goes on out there in the politics. So to me, it's like when you can come in there and rally those guys. Like we have a thousand men at a hunting thing in Oregon. I was like, I didn't know there were a thousand. I was like, by the way, Elijah, yeah, that was probably you know? eight hundred men. Yeah, here. Yeah. And look, you know what the schedule of events were? They watched Duck Dynasty for thirty minutes. I stuck my head in there. They were laughing. You know, I thought, well, it's still funny to them. 
<laughs> then they had a gospel bluegrass band that performed awesome outstanding yeah. of course then i go out there and basically is a you, introduction to jesus yeah. Yeah. surrounded by humor and a duck call demonstration yeah. and then a call to you know to put your faith and trust in jesus in the midst of the coronavirus uh and i did one on on uh, blaze tv the other day a little episode in the midst of that kind of thinking and the fear people have I basically just reminded them, I mean, what we're dispensing from our lips is, in fact, eternal health care. <laughs> That's basically what we're selling. That's right. So yeah. you, you, when people say, yeah, 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 I'm like, let's see, is there a six-foot hole waiting on you here? And they all have to say, uh, that'd be correct. Yep. I said, I, I've, I've come up on a story here. You may have a better one if you do. I want to hear it. But we're talking about not only sins removed, but your your body being raised from the dead. Yeah. I said, now, take it or leave it. Be mad at me for saying it. But I'm just saying it looks like there's a way out of here alive, and this is it. Yeah. Now, so I'm here to help. <laughs> so if you want to curse me over it, I'm like, it doesn't bother me because mm-hmm. this is all for your benefit. I didn't have to come tell you. I'm not doing it for me. Right. I'm doing it for you. I've right. thought about that so many times when that because now it's just full scale panic, you know, about the coronavirus. I always think about Matthew eight and nine because in those two people are cha- scared to death. In right. those two chapters, Jesus like went on a healing run, and if you just look at the paragraphs, you know, the first guy uh, had leprosy, and then like in fourteen it said Jesus heals many, touches. You know, this woman that had a fever and it immediately began. uh, Then she immediately began to wait on him. You know, she got up serving him. But in 817, it says this was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. Hmm. And then then after uh, then he he healed the demon possessed guy. And then in Matthew nine, he heals a paralytic. uh, And then. In nine eighteen, you know, it's a story about the dead girl and a sick woman. You know, I mean, he he's literally, and then he heals uh, the blind a blind man, and then the mute, someone who was mute. I mean, that was in two chapters. He just went through a withering barrage, showing you that he controls the atoms and right. molecules. So I agree with you. I mean. <laughs> Deep down, I'm thinking, okay, I don't want to get sick. I mean, I'm a germaphobe. I don't like shaking people's hands because every time I shake a bunch of them, I get sick. Yeah. People say, well, you're a germaphobe. I'm like, no, I'm just, I'm smart. Yeah. <laughs> I figured this out. <laughs> if you go, if you do a meet and greet and you shake 300 hands the next morning, guess what? My throat's sore. Yeah. yeah. Because some of their germs yeah. went on me and now I have it. Psalms 91 is an interesting read. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge that's a place to hide, and my <clears throat> fortress protection, uh, my God in whom I trust. By the way, that's where the coinage came from, and God we trust. Psalm 91, where it came from, for you students of the uh, history buffs. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. You're like, hmm. I wrote down the definition of pest- pestilence. Any, any uh, you know, pandemic that spreads the country viral he will cover you with his feathers under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness will be your shield rampart all these protective wordage you will not fear the terror of night the air of the flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness check this out nor the plague that destroys at midday check this out a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. They're dying all around you, and it will not come near you. But he basically ends that up like Deuteronomy 28, and he said, "Look, if you obey me, be careful to obey what I've told you in the word. The Lord your God, the Lord will send fearful plagues on you and your descendants, harsh and prolonged disasters if you don't, and severe lingering illnesses. He'll bring upon you all the diseases of Egypt. Now you read these through these things, you say, God uses pestilence and plagues as punishment tools. 
I'm just saying he may not be behind the or coronavirus. Maybe discipline, would but be he has better. used viral <laughs> infections before to punish people. So, but I think you have. It's like what we talked about: uncooked with monkeys, rats, and dogs, bats, maybe skunks. And feces going down the road in China might be the cause of it. It's a yeah. possibility. I was fixed to say maybe nobody calls it just if you're. Or the Chinese you know. were a little bit uh, uh, not careful enough. And Wuhan, where it all started, there's a germ warfare facility there. The Chinese might have done it accidentally or possibly on purpose. Well, Dan, I wouldn't put it past Dan's them. Dan's been to China. <clears throat> he told us hygiene is an issue. That is correct. In China. So, I mean. Certainly, I'm not shocked. He said it was very dangerous. I mean, we're talking feces going down both sides of the street. Yeah, it's like, kind of like the way it is in San Francisco all yeah, over China. It's just hy- hygienic issues. With well, I was people. thinking, you know, we're in the book of John, and we're, you know, we're coming up on John 2. Because in light of talking about the virus, I mean, the number one question is, well, why, why doesn't God just heal all the diseases? You, you know what I mean? Right. So I was uh, I, I was watching the commercial the other day, actually when I was watching the news about this woman Deborah, and her talking about having her home stolen, basically out from under because somebody hacked into her bank or some kind of you know wherever her home title was, and basically said it was their house, and then she got evicted out of her own home. I mean, no anything like that was possible. But I mean, I was, you would think where we live, that means somebody pulled up. To your mobile home attached a trailer hitch to it <laughs> while you weren't there That's right. and drove off. Or yeah. Maybe while you were in it. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, that would be kidnapping, not home theft. <laughs> Jimmy <but> Red, <laughs> Jimmy Red has his thing, uh, you know, he can be, he can he be. He said, gone. I can be out in 15 minutes. 15 minutes, he's gone. What the problem is, what if somebody comes up and takes him out, you know? But now everything's online. That's why, you know, cybersecurity is important. It is. And so uh, the FBI says that home title fraud is one of the fastest growing crimes. So this is a problem. Uh, And so we heard about Deborah's story. So there's a group uh, called Home Title Lock that basically is going to protect you digitally so that uh, people can't do this because you don't really get any help from banks or insurance companies. So Home Title Lock is going to do that. Uh, you need to find out if already you've been a victim or not, and you can do that. You can register with these guys. So you go to HomeTitleLock.com, HomeTitleLock.com. Uh, they'll run a search, make sure you're you're still protected. That you're living in the house that, that, that you, you own. own. Exactly. So if you enter Phil, you get uh, one month of free protection. So they're going to give you one month free because you're from our podcast. So HomeTitleLock.com. Check it out. Find out. Make sure your house is secure. And you say, well, you have a lot of people in the religious world. I would say that they're in pursuit of miracles. Would you Would you agree with that? Yeah, they that they focus on that the aspect of the I'm sick. I need a miracle to be what made well. So I mean, they look at it from that perspective, which is and to it's me a the touchy rock, subject. It's tough. I you know. Well, I get I'm it. saying, look, here's. Here's what I wish we would do in the religious world. I wish we would distinguish between the supernatural happening and a miracle. Right. I mean, they mean every, you know, words mean something. Jesus is the word, right, in flesh. But I'm saying, what is a miracle? That's the first thing you got to do is define it. And my, what, opinion, what would you say? A boarding on the miraculous, I would simply say this is a miracle. You, the Ephesians, also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Jesus is becoming a man, dying on a cross, being buried, raised from the dead. Having believed, you were marked, marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. See, I would say that I, was supernatural. I would say I would say to me, that's the supernatural working of God that's worth more all way more than temporary acts of healing and right. such. But that's my point. That that would be a supernatural act. If you call that a miracle, well a miracle was something like I mean, we're in John two, we know this miracle, which is Which was his first, by the way. Yeah, his first miracle, which I think is kind of, can I say humorous? 
I, I think it was the it's uh, you want to say it's I call it used to call it the accidental miracle, but that's not really true because obviously Jesus doesn't do things on accident. Well, no. But it was a weird setting. What's going on here? You You're know, right. I, it's it's like. Well, tell tell it, about it, what it was. So so they're having uh, a. They're, this is right after we've been talking about John. Well, Mark. they went to a wedding. They went to a wedding. He's look. He just came out of the wilderness. We talked about that. Yeah. He, he just got recognized by John the Baptist as the Lamb of God. He just got his disciples he's, together he's under the God of the Holy Spirit. So this is his first Never act up to now. Performed a miracle. Right. So they, so they show up at a wedding. His mother comes to him and says, "They're out of wine." Every time I read that, Jason, I think about that. Those guys on the porch when you tried to give them some ducks, and they said, "Man, we out of weed," because you tried to give them the ducks. Man, we out of yeah, wine. but we got a problem during <laughs> duck season. You know, getting rid of our ducks. Did I share this story? I don't know podcast? if you did on the podcast. Uh, I love this. So story. every year, you know, I mean, you're killing. You know, more than group, we can eat. Group wise, yeah. if we're having a great duck season, we hadn't had this problem last two years. <laughs> no, we have not. But if you're killing twenty a day or whatever, what was our best year? Seventeen a day. Yeah. Well, you know, that's seventeen a, a, a day for sixty days. That's a lot. Yeah. So I, you know, we carry ducks to the homeless and yep. the people who change my ladies. oil. There's yep. a guy that works there. I, I bring him the ducks widows and, and the orphans, widows, widows and orphans. But every once in a while, you're just riding along, and I got some ducks in the back of my truck, and I look over here and I see people, and they look poor. So I'm like, <laughs> I have some meat here, you know. So I'm going to give them to you. So I pulled up there on it was a street corner. I just <laughs> pulled in there. <laughs> And uh, I said, you still have your face paint on, maybe? Oh, yeah, I have my face paint on, you know. <laughs> and so I rolled down the window. There was a couple African-American guys on the porch. I said, y'all want some ducks? He said, we out. So that didn't make sense. We out. So I said, so you want the ducks? <laughs> he said, we, we out. <laughs> I said, so you don't want the duck? You know, because then I thought, oh, he's out. Like, like I'm out. And I said, so you're. You're out. You don't want ducks, right? And he's like, we out of weed. <laughs> I said, no, I don't want any weed. I'm going to give you these ducks. He said, we out of weed. <laughs> he never got it, dude. <laughs> so I said, dang, I didn't got up on a drug deal here. You know what I mean? So he, time- he thought I was wanting to trade ducks <laughs> for weed. Yeah, <laughs> right. We out of weed. <laughs> so when I see Mary comes to Jesus, I don't know why that I think about yeah. that, but I do. Well, but you she, were trying to do a good deed. It just I was trying to give some ducks. He's like, I ain't got no weed. So Mary says, we're out of wine. They're out of wine. She comes to Jesus. Which was interesting because it was like I've always said is so is she telling him to go to the liquor store? You know, what, what's, what's he doing? He says, "Dear, I think she had some uh, inclination that he could pull." That's this what off. I think. So he says, "Dear woman, I, mean, I don't know." He says, I don't know what to think about, dear woman? Why do you involve me?" Jesus replied, "My time has not yet come," which was an interesting response. I mean, but, what do you think he means by that? I mean, I think he's telling her. You know this. This was a, that's why I think it was not a planned miracle. I don't like, believe it was. Either. I think he was going to wait a little while. But like, it's your mom. You know, what are you going to do? You know, because well, what, I think he was meaning. I, I want to give my opinion. Sure. That he's like not going to reveal himself as the son of God, right? Even though you, the, you, that's right. You, even though he's going to do it, and he is. Because he kind of kept it a secret for a while. There's a there's a key verse though that you, that we've read many times on this podcast, and we will continue to read. And I want to read it now. Is it First Corinthians two seven or it must be First Corinthians second seconds? No, it working. might be just a case uh, of him f- fixing to display his power before he had really officially started displaying his power. He came out of a virgin, which is. Which is worthy of note. I mean, which she without knew, any sex which, involved, which she knew, which she knew, but nobody so, believed. Nobody believed. I understand that. Well, I read this First Corinthians two point, seven. He, he yeah. said, "We speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden from hidden, and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory." So that's why he would when he remember when he would do a miracle later and he'd say, Don't tell anybody. Yep. Of course they would. Yeah. And <laughs> right. he knew that. And he knew that. But they kept it hidden well, to some degree. Yeah. And people it's just like now, if you see somebody doing tricks, what do you think? I mean, you, you go to see 
you know, famous magician, name one, and they do something. Well, they're claiming to do something that's not possible. They're claiming, right? You know, there's something here. And you can't here. explain. We are looking at it. You can't really explain how they're doing it, but you're not thinking they're really doing mat like creating things out of thin air. It's a trick. But right? you dismiss it, and that's I think I, that's what they were doing with Jesus. Yeah. Now, this is a pretty good trick. You well, got so so. Look, here's what I love. Real this. good. So she he says, "Why do you involve me? My time is now coming." So that's not really a no. And it's not a yes. I love Mary's response. His mother looks to the servants and says, "Do whatever he tells you." So I like she that took statement. That, yeah, <laughs> she took that as a this. He's fixing to tell you to do something. I have movement here. <laughs> that's right. But that's he, a standalone no. statement. Look, if everybody in this world lived by that, yeah, it's think about the world. That's a good point. I mean, his mom, whatever he says, you do. That's really good advice. It really is. And and because she knew, and she wasn't sure what he was gonna. I mean, I guess she really knew. So then it says nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing. You remember they washed, they washed each other's feet. I mean, there's a whole thing about that. So you got six jars. So let's for the audience. So I would say so. The, think of a, uh, a fifty-five gallon drums, pretty close, wouldn't you? Well, it's, the hill's 30, 30 gallons. gallons, so, so it's 180, 30 gallon, 180 roughly. gallons, roughly, something. 180 gallons. I'll just get a picture on how big that well, is. Well, think it's about six, 650. Well, it's 30 gallons of milk. Right. Yep. Five times how many? Yeah. Six. 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 That's yeah. a lot. There was a lot of people at this party. Well, look, remember the, the, the way they did weddings back in those days is it wasn't just a day like we do. It was a week or two. Like it was a big deal. It was a festival. By the way, day. all these people that say you can never touch alcohol well, at any I time for any that, reason. Right? Well, we have a wedding here, and we have God Himself oh. in a human body saying, "Well, let's let's whoop up a little wine here." Yeah, and well, some just, of these theologians say, "Well, back then, it their, wasn't their really, alcohol wasn't fermented, yeah. which causes my eyebrow to go." <laughs> how big can your eye roll go? I heard that growing the up. The guy starts this. dragging about how good it is, and they said, "Boy, that's quite the grape juice." Eh? Well, oh, that's right. Geez. I mean, there's no way out of the context of this story uh-huh. that you can come up with that this wasn't not only wine, but really good wine and wine that had an effect because the the owner of the house says, "And know, wine is allowed." So they took it to him. He tasted. He's like, "Whoa." You know, this is at the end of the proceedings, and the, he's like, this is the best wine so far. That's why a few people have come in, and I'll be drinking a little glass of wine before I go to sleep, you know, go to bed at night. It was recommended, by by the way, the Apostle Paul told Timothy, exact quote, stop drinking only water, but use a little wine for your stomach and frequent mm-hmm. illnesses. So it, evidently, it's healthy for you. Oh, they I just remind is. people, if they say, well, I didn't know if you was a Christian, you could drink a glass of wine. I said, wedding, wedding. Go back to the wedding. <laughs> wedding. <laughs> wedding. Well, I think it depends on the context. I mean, look, you got to be smart about it. If well, someone has sure a problem, do. if somebody has a problem and they have a pass with it, okay, maybe it's just not for you, and that's fine. Being yeah, an ex-drunkard, I didn't have any alcohol drink for about a decade. Yeah. And then one day I drank a glass of wine. I thought, good night. What, what, Cause, what, cause where's you, the verse yeah. that says everything's permissible, but not everything's benef- beneficial? Uh, to the or, Corinthians. Corinthians. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think it falls into that. And like when there's a kid, a teenager, well, there's a reason, you know, that it's against the law for yep. underage drinking. I mean, they're not mature enough to do it. And they're doing it for a totally different reason. They're trying to be cool. They're trying to rebel against what their parent. Well, that's wrong. And just from you what know? I've seen driving up down these rural mm-hmm. roads out here, they don't need to be drinking wine or anything else, these well, young no. bucks. There's a beer can at every 10 feet in the ditch, and yep. there's a bullet hole in every sign. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. that's a bad combo. And you there's know? a meth lab every third trailer. The out. bullet holes in the signs from here to West Monroe, where we live out here, is a pretty good sign. <laughs> you know, right. make sure you have your weapon with you. They're shooting Wait, holes what was the sand. verse? Do you remember when Jesus said, talking about he and John the Baptist? Is that is that John eight where he says you called because you know John didn't eat or he didn't drink wine. He had well Nazareth. Matthew eleven. Yeah. yeah, it says he had no. He had the Holy Spirit from birth, and it said he never 
participated in yeah. fermented drink. He never drank Not anything allowed. alcoholic. And then he had he was very strict on his food. As we know, he just ate locusts. I mean, like he wouldn't eat certain things. God, no, we, God we, fixed we have it to so they that. couldn't get him on food laws. That's right. And so Jesus says, "You called him. You called him. You said he had a demon." And yeah. me, the son of man, who came eating and drinking. He did, he wasn't talking it, about water. It's no. Matthew <laughs> eleven, eighteen and nineteen. But I love what he says at the end of that. Because he said and here you say he's a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Because he went hey, he loved the partiers. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Right. He hung out around them. But there and I I want to bring up before I read this this the last phrase of that, or I can just tell you it says, But wisdom is proved right by her actions. When you look at Galatians five, nineteen through twenty two you know, we've all studied with people, and you kind of it shows the before and after. Yep. The acts of sinful nature are obvious. You know, drunkenness is obviously in there. It's yep. always around the top of the list. Yep. But when you get to the fruit of the spirit, there's one in here that doesn't get any you know headlines, which is self control. Yep. We know you're being led by the spirit, but that's the way I view drinking. It's an opportunity to exercise a fruit of the spirit, which is self control. And I think you should always err on not being anywhere close to being drunk. That is correct. Correct. So, but people don't realize that. You know, they're like, either do it outside of Jesus or have nothing to do with it. that. I think that's kind of what most religious people teach. Well, what they do, like, you know, my, our, my granddaughters go to Christian school. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> what they've taught them, because, you know, they come home and talk to me about it, is you can never be drunk if you never take a drink. That's the mindset is yep. we'll rule out all. Which is not a bad that's plan. Not, that's what I'm Look, saying. I that's, never touched a drop until I was 30 years old because I saw how you had lived and I thought, I'm out on that. Yeah. Yep. It wasn't a spiritual decision. I just said, I'm out. So when all my buddies were doing it in high school, I said, I'm out on that. I've seen what that does yep. to people. And so you said, well, why did you wait till you were 30? Because I thought, I'm not sure I'll be mature enough to handle it. Right. And so I just, when I was 30, the world says 21, but I went nine years further. <laughs> you went By to the way, <laughs> Jesus age. Because I was scared for, I might like it. For all of the naysayers, they're, oh, they're, they're, they're encouraging people to get drunk. No. Nope. Uh, here's the well, qualifications, saying that. qualifications for an elder in Titus 1. An elder must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, self-controlled, not given, are y'all listening, to much Wine, not much, not much. You say, well, he didn't say not any. Are not allowed to yeah. drink fermented drink like John the Baptist. Right. He said an elder cannot be not given too much wine. Somebody says, well, how much is not much? Uh, that'd be not much. <laughs> <laughs> there's much and there's not much, which is the opposite so of a lot. So here's what Jesus told his disciples in Luke twenty one thirty four. This is a great one. Uh, so this is directly from Jesus. We've already said, we know he says, it's not about not drinking. Here's what he says, be careful to his disciples or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing. Those, I've been there. Yeah, me too. Drunkenness. I've been there. And the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. So for those of us who have lived that life, so you, so, you know, our, our audience out there, we're trying to tell you, and you know the difference too. Well, Everybody think, wants to make it either yeah. or, but it, but remember, we're talking about if the lifestyle takes you there, even Jesus says, that's not good. A lot of people will go so far, unfortunately, they won't even any food stuffs with any alcohol in it, you know, like a vanilla oh flavor. Yeah. In other words, you know, eggnog, you know, you've yep. got like two kitchen spoons of spirits. Right. I mean, and they're yeah. saying, whoa, what, I got spirits in it? I'm like, uh, yeah, it's just two kitchen spoons for the whole thing. Right. It's just a hint. But here's my and they're point. like, I can't touch it, Phil. Uh, you know, get, well, what about know. NyQuil? There's more alcohol in a cup of NyQuil than, you know, from what I heard. Yeah. But here's oh, my is. deal. Look, I've, I've never. Legalism. When I'm, it comes to yeah. across the board, including drunkenness and drinking a glass of wine, right. legalism is it's a killer. Uh, 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 you know yep. what I'm saying? I think yep. you got to look at the heart. Look, here I am. I'm 50. I've never been drunk. I've never been close to being drunk. Yep. In my life, but I'm defending the freedom of drinking alcohol, whether it's Nyquil, because I just use common sense. I thought I waited till I was 30 to drink any kind of adult beverage. And then when I tasted it, I thought, 
I don't see how this caught on. That's terrible. <laughs> Most of it doesn't taste well. It must be an acquired taste because <laughs> yeah. that was awful. Yeah. It tasted like NyQuil. <laughs> but then I, it hit me. I thought, but I've drank NyQuil before. So well, was, was that wrong? You know? Some might argue yes, but if you tried well, to what, go legalistic. You but know. I haven't been drunk. And you can get drunk. That's what, You get in this debate, people say, well, what about weed? You know, we brought that up. But it's the same kind of what it leads to drunkenness. Or, you know, when my favorite is Ephesians 5 when it says, don't get drunk on wine. But then it says a curious word, which leads to debauchery. Yep. Now, what is that? I, re- I really you- don't know, but it sounds awful because it's worse than getting drunk. It's leading it's to the whole lifestyle. It's leading to that lifestyle. So it doesn't matter what you're really getting. Would it matter what you're getting drunk on? No. I mean, you're it's it's a mind. You're now under the control of a substance, because then he says, "But rather be filled with the Spirit." So be under the influence of the Holy Spirit of God. Which debauchery to would be Woodstock, uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah. That's debauchery. Well, you think it's the not re- that there's anything wrong with rock and roll. <laughs> That's right. It's my point. Yeah, just but the if, way you if, go about celebrating it, I guess. Well, yeah. So uh, we talk a lot about, in this family, we talk a lot about hair um, because we have a lot, which is. Well, there's some problems with that, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you find an occasional hair in your food, yeah. which is, it's always gross unless it's yours, which is weird. <laughs> it always bothers you. <laughs> Feels like mine's clean. Mine's clean. It's like, I don't care. It's not mine. Of course, so it, it bothers me. Jason and I just started playing golf, when, and him and on the golf course in the summer, long hair is not good. You're trying to keep it out of your face. You're just oh, sweating. yesterday the wind was blowing. I mean, it was hair was in my face. <laughs> But for those of us, and I'm losing a little bit of mine, those of us, especially that are losing a lot of hair, that's you. You probably like to have some of those problems. So we got a, we got a group uh, that uh, that we go to. There, go to on trying to keep our hair, and it's called Keeps. Um, so if you go to Keeps dot com, you can kind of find out what they're all about. Uh, they basically have these FDA approved hair loss treatments, trying to replace some hormones. So if you got hair loss and you want to try to keep some of your hair. Uh, you may want to check these guys out. Keeps.com slash door. Keeps.com slash door. You get 50% off your first hair loss treatment. So if you're losing your hair and you want to try to have uh, some regrowth, why don't you check them out? Keeps.com slash door. That's one of our old former elders that's gone on to be with the Lord now. And he told me one time, I said something about rock and roll one time in a sermon. I was just like, it's time for us to rock and roll. And after the sermon, he said, do you know what that phrase means? And I was like, uh, I'm in it in the contest. Let's get after it. And he said, it means sex. And I was like, not to me. <laughs> but, I mean, he was convinced of that. I was like, that's just, that's just sex. That's what that yeah. means. I was like, well, I don't know about all that. There's a couple of Proverbs about this. So I pro- you guys will like this. Proverbs 26, 29. Like a thorn bush in a drunkard's hand is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. Yeah. I mean, that's a good way to think about it. You get out there, get all torn up, you have a thorn bush in your hand. You know, when people are drunk, they get into these terrible situations. You just, you get beat up, car wrecks, bad decisions. I've been there and done that. Right I think up. the point is, the reason Ephesians 5 says it leads to debauchery is because the further you go down that road, the harder it is to get away from it. Yeah, you know, right. at some really point, is. that's why these groups – that are even outside of Jesus that people get involved in to get off drugs or to whatever they call it, uh, you know, that they have the AA groups and all, you know, the 12 steps. and Yeah, celebrate you know, with, recovery. Yeah, celebrate. Because it's like, you know, some of these people have been involved in this 10, 15, 20 years. Well, even if you, you know, are introduced to Jesus, you have God's spirit, man, you wake up, you're, you're addicted to that substance and that lifestyle you know you go through the rigors and the you know you're seeing visions and we, we fight what, it all the time. withdrawals you know so yeah for them you go have to proceed with caution it's like when i go to a lot of events i do they're not christian events and i've said this before i'd be the only sober person there i don't drink while i'm there and you say well why you have the freedom to do so yep but I'm letting them know there's a big difference between me and you. Even though I could do this, I'm going to 
let it be clear, and that's why when Jesus said wisdom is proved right by our actions, that I'm not controlled by that to where I can't be along and stand out. It's not bothering me that I'm standing out right now. And then when I get up and speak, I share with them, I share Jesus. Well, I think they find it fascinating that I believe it would have been okay for me to drink a little, but I chose not to just because I wanted to let everybody know here. Because you can tell when somebody's hammered, you know, they're falling down over each other, and here I am sharing Jesus with them. It's just kind of weird. And uh, that's just my approach. So I'm saying within the context, you make decisions of that. Because I don't, you know, i got a lot of problems, but, you know, getting drunk's not one of them. I never have been drunk. At this point in my life, I have no desire to experience that. My streak is too long. Yep. You know what I mean? So I may drink a little wine uh, or, you know, and then I think, an occasional beer. or but, you know. and, and also, there is a principle in Romans uh, where Paul basically, and he's talking about in the context about meat sacrificed to idols. But I think we, we kind of make that same leap about drinking that you, you are aware of other people and their weaknesses. You, you know, you have, a, in, that, in the context of Paul was doing it, you got a brother here, he thinks it's wrong. You don't think it's wrong. He's like, well, look, don't, don't flaunt it. Don't put it in his yeah. face. I mean, just like, and I would say the same about drinking a beer. If I knew a person like thinks it's wrong, I don't want to drink one dry. Well, I would never say, I'm going to drink this beer. I tell them when they tell yeah. me that, I'll say, great. Yeah. Well, Peter no also says don't, don't use your freedom as a cover exactly. up for evil. That's the other way. Which is a lot of people in church buildings. That's they're right. like, well, I'm free to drink. And then they're getting buzzed every night saying, well, it's okay. You know, what they do is they, they go out there and get drunk. You, and they say to me sometime, well, you told me I could drink. I'm like, I just told you drinking's not a sin. Drunkenness is. That's right. I said, man, it's self control, dude. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit. Right. So it makes it interesting. So I, I did a little bit of research. So the when Jesus made the 180 gallons of wine up to, and that's 3,740 3, ounces or 150 bottles of wine. So just to put it in our mind, how many kind bottles? Of, 150 bottles. Mm. So the kind of wine we're used to seeing. That's that's how much wine it was. So I had to been a big wedding. I was, hope. Can yeah. you imagine how good it was? I mean, here's the creator of the universe holds the atoms and molecules in his hand, and he's like, "You want a you want a glass of wine? You know what? Watch this." Well, yeah, the host you know, says I mean, the host of the wedding said everyone brings out the choice wine first. And then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. <laughs> but you've saved the best for till last, till now, you know. Yeah, you I mean, talk about God's winery. I mean, if you got I mean, just God. imagine how good that was. I always think about that. You know, oh, like when be. he ate the fish on the creek, I was like, I, be, I he probably picked the best physically I noticed fit these fish. wine connoisseurs, they'll kind of roll that wine a little bit oh, yeah. in their glass. They've they got a little the formula there, and they'll – <laughs> you know, they'll do they'll, they'll pucker their lips a little bit when it first i'm thinking remember that, yeah, that old guy knows what good wine is i don't you remember that I movie you either. remember that movie with sinbad you know and it had a i think it was phil hartman or whatever and he took that glass of wine you know and he was like smelling it and he and sinbad was there everybody was waiting on him to yeah. you know drink it Isn't you good? know and he was doing all this you know and he's like hey some people drink wine and some people date, you know, because he, <laughs> he, <laughs> he wasn't getting to the well, thing. Yeah, he was just like, then he then he took a sip and he wrenched it around. He just like had a, you know, three minute encounter <laughs> with the wine. That was hilarious. It was probably the only part of that movie that was any good. That's it was funny. Hilarious. But my point is, you know, when you think about why God does miracles, you know what? What is he trying to accomplish? Here's what this says, and you'll take it from here. <laughs> Jesus, th- this the first of his mir- miraculous signs. Oh, Jesus to read that. That's good. <laughs> and he said, "He thus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him." In other words, it helped their faith that he turned water into wine. Which is why he did it. Which is why he did it. But he said, I, and you want to talk about reveal his glory, you say, here's some jars of water. He said, guess what I can do with good, yeah. if you control the atoms, the atomic structure of all things, you can make choice wine to out, Jace's of, out point, of a barrel of water. To Jace's point, so I brought this bottle of water in. If I just said, boop, and all of a sudden it became choice wine, 
with with me set, speaking it into I would have said that would be I, I'd be I'd be with him. Yeah, that's right. I'm with so him. So you were talking about drawing the line on miracles when you can make 150 bottle wine uh, bottles of wine out of some jars of water. Mm-hmm. You know, miraculously, instantly, because they a, just went over. A that's a miracle. That that we can't refute. There's some, yeah. It has to be something. I just don't like it when you go to these church buildings and you come in. The guy gets up. It's like, are you ready for a miracle today? And I'm like, I, I have something better than that. The ones I prayed they're for. They're like, what? You have something better than a miracle? I have prayed for them, and they said the the diagnosis where they are going to die. Last wish, little kids coming. We pray for them. Some on their back got tubes in them. We pray for them, and they make it. Someone says that was a miracle. I said, no. I said it was just God answering prayer. He raised them yeah, up. That's why I said because there's a difference. Because an atheist would say, "Well, he got lucky and yeah. just got better," which means what about the guy that didn't? I mean, yeah, be, but yeah. but it, even an a atheist, miracle, if he'd seen the water turn to wine, even an atheist would have to say, "Whoa." Yeah, a miracle yeah. is when something you you have a bottle of water, and there's no trick, there's no magician, and you have the power to just go boom. Now, on your physical anatomy, it would be I would say to attach a body part that would be a miracle, because like inside we can't see, so That's it right. could be God working. But like if you didn't have an arm, and then bam, you have a a real arm, not a trick. Okay, that yeah. was a miracle. It's so when somebody says, operating. "Do you want a miracle today?" I think, "Boy, I'm fixing to see something here. I want to see." If you're totally blind for forty years, yeah, and, and and some fellow walks up and says he spits on his fingers and touches you on the eye, like, "Good night." I'm, I'm seeing people, but it looked like trees walking around. He said, and he did it again. He said, "What about that?" And and he said, "Good night. I can see. If you can do that, you can perform miracles." Yeah. Just like we sang the song yesterday, uh, our Holy Roar class, we sang, it's called Waymaker. Most people probably heard it. Waymaker, uh, miracle worker, promise, promise keeper. keeper, light in the darkness. So you said, well, you sang that song? So, yeah. Which is my point. What What is the greater thing? That you experience a miracle? Like, let's say you experience that. Or... You have a really close relationship, as in bond, with the person who does the miracles. Where's the better place? To have a miracle happen to you on this earth, or to be with part of the inner circle posse of the one who did the miracle? What everyone needs to remember is is the witnessing even of miracles themselves will not save you. You would still have to have your faith. And the blood of Jesus, who mm-hmm. died on a cross roughly 2,000 years ago, his burial and his resurrection, you would still have to have your faith. The miracle can't save you. Blood had to be shed to remove your sin, and the resurrection had to happen, or you mm-hmm. wouldn't be part of it. In other point. words, it supersedes Well, it's like la- la- it's like Lazarus. He had, I would say the greatest miracle that could happen to you. you He's dead you. when he yep. come back. So you're like, well, he saved. Well, guess what? He died again. Sure. So I've never thought about it until this very discussion, but maybe that's why Jesus performed a miracle like this as his first one for his disciples to see, because the results of the miracle, think about it. So the, they had some good wine at the wedding. I mean, we would Nothing happened. Most people would. That was eat, my point. Most I, people would <laughs> even disagree with the miracle. Don't. What are you trying to do? And only a, that, and that and was going to be my point. <laughs> what was accomplished here? The only thing that was accomplished was his disciples said, whoa. That's it. This guy is worth it. It led you to the miracle worker. Oh, there you oh. go. <laughs> I love it when it all comes together right at the end. That's that's when the that's the podcast. So look, I will continue to wash my hands. I don't want to get the virus. But you know what? If I do, God may heal me. May be a supernatural mm-hmm. act. But if he don't, guess what? I'm coming back from the dead. Yeah. That's right. It's sound logic. It is. My sins are forgiven. Very sound logic. I win in the end. We're not getting out of here without it. I died of the coronavirus. Oh, well, I'll be back. I did read where people are not drinking Corona beer because they're afraid of the yeah. name yeah, Corona that's, I wonder if I started Those that. Those are very <laughs> high. Yeah. That's, I that's have, high intellect there. I may have started that, Phil. I appreciate that remark. <laughs> yeah, there you go. See you all next See week. See you next time. 
So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast. 